And now it's time for this week's Outside. And I'm joined by a very special guest. He is a British actor, writer, voice artist and impressionist, known for his exceptional talent in impersonating various personalities and characters. He began his career as a stand-up comedian on the Northern Club circuit in the 1970s, performing in local working men's clubs in Yorkshire and the North. He's also a professional puppeteer. He gained significant recognition for his work on the satirical puppet show Spitting Image. He is most famously known for providing the voice of Margaret Thatcher. Have a look at him in action. This is Parliament and Big Ben. When I was Prime Minister, the clock was always set five minutes fast, proving Britain was always ahead. Of course, America is five hours behind us. Though if there's a world war, that does... A spitting image legend, <laughs> Steve Nolan, joins me now. Lovely to have you here. Did you like Mrs Thatcher? Uh, I never voted for her. <laughs> but, you know, you're in a situation... But she paid your bills. Well, no, she, my, my, my grandmother used to say to me, she said, well, well why don't you vote for her? She bought you a house, <laughs> which, is, which is sort of true. Um, uh, it, no, I never voted for her, but you, you, you can see why people greatly admired her. I, under, I, I absolutely understand that. And I understood sort of where she came from because, you know, I came from a very working class background. All my family were Tories uh, and, you know, they wanted uh, to sort of, in, in, you know, move up and sort of improve. And they, it, they wanted me to go to university. They want, you know, so that they came from a generation who had nothing. Were you a natural rebel then? Uh, not really. Uh, the thing is with, uh, uh, my teacher used to say to me, he said, look, if you put the class clown on stage, it will never work. But it's always the quiet ones who sit at the back. And I was the one that sat at the back and sort of made notes and, and very said, no, please, sir, I do impressions and got onto a, a show. Um, and when I used to do the clubs, um, people didn't, it used to believe it was me when I got on stage because I just became a you know, completely different person. You acted, it wasn't always you, because I was interested here that you went to a Jesuit school. You went to a Jesuit school, but you were out doing the men's club circuit yes. at age 16. I wondered how did, what went wrong at your Jesuit school to well, have you at 16 I, I, and work I, at men's I clubs. had a, a, a wonderful time at school. It was a great school. I got very good results. I'm still in contact with the <laughs> teachers. Uh, so I had a very, very good education and I was... Uh, uh, I, 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 loved, I loved the whole schooling, um, but I wanted to perform. And the thing is, it, it, there was no one, that, it, I had no contact in theatre. So the only live entertainment I saw were the working men's clubs. So I, I just, and I, my grandmother had to take me because I was too young to go <laughs> to the pubs by myself. And, and in those days, I'm going back a very long time, um, I used to do Frank Spencer because everybody <laughs> did Frank Spencer. I'm so sorry for doing that voice. But the other people I used to do were, were, were women who I greatly admired in comedy. There was a lady called Hilda Baker. Oh, 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 I've got a, I must, oh, it's nearly ten past. Oh, I must get a little amput on my watch. Walter, have you been? I just love the thing about those voices. They were so wonderfully comic to listen to. And that, I think, is what I picked up on with all the voices I did. Um, and, and, and nowadays, it's, you can argue it's more difficult because the politicians have less interest can in I voices. Can I ask you, watching you now come alive as you do these people, is it about escapism for you? Were you maybe escaping your roots and being these wonderful people? I think um, all actors live in a slightly sort of fantasy world where we do escape into the other world. And I remember when I was very, very young, I had a scarf and this scarf could be um, uh, a, 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 a turban or it could be a, a scarf or it could be a, a train or it could be anything. And behind the couch, I used to 
put this on and pretend to be people. And I used to hate it when people used to look what Stephen doing behind the couch. And I was sort of being other people. And that's sort of... Uh, I, that, that's sort who, of who's I your favourite person you've been? And do you take on the person? Do you learn a bit about the people? Do you want to get that involved? Um, psychologically, no, because you'd go crackers, wouldn't you, only if you got you're too far in it. Um, and I don't like doing Mrs Thatcher at home. Um, people say, you know, do you do Mrs Thatcher at home? And I don't... Why? But, Why? Oh, goodness me, one doesn't want to live with this voice. <laughs> Why should anybody want to live with this voice coming? And what would the neighbours think? It would bring down property prices, and we don't want that, do we? Dennis loved a voice. <laughs> Dennis well, loved a voice. I, 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 <laughs> the, the, the voice I like doing is probably my favourite, is Beryl Reed. And she's just... Uh, Beryl Reed had such a warm, uh, uh, friendly sort of voice. And uh, uh, that's the one that, that I, I, I quite like doing. Were you, I was going to say, were you kinder to the people and the voices of the people you like? Did you pick fault in Margaret Thatcher's voice? Did you deliberately make it more prickly, more spiky? Well, we had to... The, so here's, here's the sort of caricature puppet. Um, and if you want to do an accurate impersonation of Margaret Thatcher, that is possible to do. That's the way she used to speak in interviews. But goodness me, the problem is that this particular voice does not match the caricature. So what I had to do was take the voice that she had in the House of Commons, which was stronger and more intimidating, and I used to do that voice... To match the caricature of the puppet. Now, goodness me, Mrs. Thatcher did not like, talk like that in interviews, but it made sense to make that voice uh, match the, the caricature. I hear you can do a cracking Anne Widdicombe as well. well what have you done to emphasise <laughs> her voice? Well, um, she's got two voices. She's got, uh, she's got two notes in her voice, uh -huh. which is technically very difficult to do. Um, uh, so ask, ask Anne a question, and she's not here, but we'll try to get her to answer a question. So have the women become, uh, replaced the men in the hearts of the nation after this I war, think I'm going to interrupt you there because it's my opinion that counts. Uh, women have always ruled the roost. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, in every home across Britain, it is the woman of the house that takes control and has always taken control. So I do not see that there is anything to further to discuss. Well, there's something else I've got to discuss here, Go Steve. On. Why do you do women's voices? I mean, you're magnificent. Well, you? Why women's voices more than I, I, men's? I, so, technically, I have a higher <laughs> voice. But here's the thing. I was brought up by my grandmother. And she was an indomitable woman, tough love Yorkshire woman. And I think the men were useless in my family. <laughs> and I think I was just drawn to what is now psychologically described as alpha women. And I think I, that was my... Uh, now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, well, I, I don't I, I get that and I understand that. But to be able to do a woman's voice, I would have thought that would have been difficult. You know, the, the height or the, the thinness or the strength of the voice is different for a man, surely. I mean, I, I, I can do male voices. Oh, go well, on, I, then. I, do I a did, few, do I, a I, few. I did, well, <laughs> on Smith and Image, I was the person who did Roy Hattersley, who was the person who did all the spitting. And, um, you know, and I've done other voices over the years as well. And it's, I think it's just the fact that the women's voices I have chosen to do are more comedic than men's. Now, whether, whether that's a, a sort of sexist thing to say, I don't know. But that's what I think. That the, Anne Widdicombe has just got the most wonderful uh, voice. When, when I, I met her, she, she, I said, you've got two notes, Anne. I said, you've got the top note and the bottom note happening at the same time. And the other person who has that voice is Homie Simpson. Homie Simpson and the Simpsons, he has the same thing. He, the, the same two notes happening at the voice, exactly the same time. Quite difficult to do, actually, but there we are. How long does it take you to get a voice perfected? I mean, can you start to one and go, oh, it's not quite right there. I'll put it aside yes. and I'll come back to it a You bit start later. with one word, you, uh, for me, wow. uh, and um, you start with one word. <laughs> uh, many years ago, uh, the, the word I chose for Kenneth Williams was yes. 
So oh, I love Kenneth. Do yes, that again. Love Kenneth. You say, I started with the word yes, and then you develop it, you see, and then you find all the very different kinds of voices that he had, because he could be so common, you know. Yes, he could be very common and very, very intellectual. The most difficult voice I ever did was actually Robin Williams, because like Kenneth Williams, uh, Robin Williams had lots of different voices. And uh, the energy of his voice and the rhythms, oh, yes, good morning, Vietnam. He went high, he went low, he went all over the place. He was very sentimental. And this, yes, and then he could get really excited and do all that oh sort of God. stuff. Oh, my God, you could have been Robin oh. there. You even looked like him as oh, well. Oh, you know, you know, you've got, you got to try to look like the person you're doing. Huh. <laughs> That's incredible. Who You talk about voices less interesting, maybe, some of the voices now. Who do you think has got a good voice now? Who, who are your current faves? Um, I don't really do um, voices anymore. I, I'm, I'm what they used to call the UK gold impressionist, because no, I do no, all the you, ones... No, but you say that. Can you put this skill behind you, or were you glad to walk away? I mean, it's a gift. I, I was sort of glad to stop doing the, the contemporary voices. I think as you get older, and I don't know why this is the case, but I think it's true, that you somehow lose the capacity to do it. Either it's something that happens in your brain or your throat, I don't know. And You've worn uh, out your vocal cords. Well, there, 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 is, there, 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 is that, there is that issue. But it, it's that thing where um, I once had a camera put down my throat and they wanted to, to see what it looked like and all the rest of it. They said, you have, you have the second most interesting larynx we've ever seen. <laughs> And I said, right, OK, who had the most interesting larynx? And they said a ventriloquist, which makes absolute sense, uh, because the, the noise is coming not from the larynx, it's coming from... You've got an Olympic gold winged <laughs> larynx. <laughs> Look, can I just say, Steve, that's been fantastic. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, we'll have well, you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely wonderful. Look...